Uh, do I have to go and talk about the week's football? Yes, it is something that you have to do. Fine. Yes, I'll go and talk about Manchester United. <clears throat> and Liverpool. All the rest of them. Shut, Shut up, up and, and sit down. down. What's the story, Internet? I hope everyone is having a wonderful day so far and you've enjoyed the midweek matches at least a little bit more than I have. So, to cleanse the palate before I talk about the uh, Premier League matches, um, I want to talk about a match that I actually completely missed because it was in the, uh, the Coppa Italia and um, so it went completely over my head. Um, but it was the, uh, the Milan derby, it was Inter Milan versus AC Milan and Inter Milan absolutely destroyed AC Milan. Not in the scoreline, but if you look at the statistics, they were all over them. And so um, Inter Milan ended up winning 2-1, um, thanks to a Lukaku penalty and Christian Eriksen's free kick in the 97th minute. Um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic had scored for AC Milan, and he also got sent off after a bust-up with his former teammate, Romelu Lukaku. Um, so not good news for, uh, for AC Milan there. Um, who seem to be having a little bit of a torrid time after their amazing run. Now they just seem to be a bit lacklustre. So, um, but yeah, 27 shots for Inter to AC's 5. 10 shots on target to AC's 1. 66% possession to 34%. So congratulations to Inter Milan. They absolutely destroyed AC Milan. Um, so, into the Premier League. So... Um, Leeds United beat Newcastle 2-1 um, on Tuesday and um, Newcastle were by far the better team. Um, possession was relatively even at 58-42 to 42 in um, favour of Leeds but Newcastle had 22 shots, only 5 of them were on target. Leeds had 9 shots, only 2 of them on target but they only needed those 2, they ended up winning 2-1. So... Um, and Newcastle only scored one of their 22 shots. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Newcastle are struggling a little bit at the minute, and um, this match definitely didn't do anything to help their, their case. Um, so, yeah, fair play to Leeds, though. They, uh, they ended up doing very well, so fair play to them. Uh, West Ham beat Crystal Palace 3-2. Uh, Thomas Suchek is... Just killing it for West Ham at the moment. Um, no disrespect to the lad, but he just really came out of nowhere. And he's just absolutely killing it. Um, I found it funny that people were um, referring to him as David Moyes' new Fellaini. <laughs> so um, that was quite a funny comment. Um, so yeah, fair play to West Ham. Um, thoroughly deserved as well. They had less possession by 5%, but um, at the end of the day... They had more shots and more shots on target and they had more goals. So fair play to them. Uh, that result did take them into the Champions League places until other results um, uh, sent teams up there. Um, and it sends Palace closer and closer to the uh, bottom of the table. So I, I don't think they're worried just yet, but they're still... They're only five points ahead of Brighton who are in 17th. So they are ten points ahead of Fulham who are in, in 18th, but still... Um, Southampton won Arsenal 3. Um, Arsenal well and truly got their uh, revenge for the FA Cup. Um, so even though they're not into the next round of the Cup, they <laughs> they dominated Southampton to uh, <laughs> to push on in the league. Um, it looked like Southampton were going to pull the wool over their eyes again because they scored first, thanks to Stuart Armstrong. But Arsenal just outclassed them on the day. So um, they go level with points on Chelsea, um, worth 30. So, yeah, they're just peeking into the uh, the top of, the top of the table. They're just hello, we're here. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, a good result for Arsenal, especially since Southampton are in or, in and around them, in and around them. I'm trying to say amidst. <laughs> um, so next one, uh, Manchester City five, West Brom nil. Not particularly surprising. Um, yeah, there's not a lot to say really. Manchester City just completely outclassed West Brom. They just 
thoroughly destroyed them at the Hawthorns. So I'm not even going to touch that one too much. It's just absolutely destroyed them. So um, next one, Chelsea nil, Wolves nil. Um, Thomas Tuchel's first game in charge was a, a board draw with uh, Wolves. Um, Chelsea dominated possession, 79% to 21 uh, they had 14 shots to Wolves' is 4 and they had 5 on target to Wolves' is 0 and somehow it still ended up 0-0. So, um, but it's a point, it's a positive point for Thomas Tuchel. So um, they are level on points with Arsenal and uh, they remain in 8th. So, um, so yeah, not the start that Thomas Tuchel will have wanted, but like I said, points a point at the end of the day. Um, Burnley 3, Aston Villa 2. Um, Burnley are absolutely killing it at the moment after beating Liverpool last week, advancing in the cup and now beating Aston Villa 3-2. Uh, just absolutely killing it. Um, woeful amount of possession at 38 to Aston Villa 62. Um, but as I say all the time, say it with me, possession isn't everything. <laughs> possession does not win you football matches. Um, out of their 10 shots, they had five on target. Three of them went in the back of the net. Um, Aston Villa had 18 shots with 10 on target. And only two of them went in the back of the net. So um, it did look like um, Aston Villa were going to win it, thanks to Jack Grealish. But uh, Dwight McNeil and Chris, uh, Chris Wood had other thoughts. So um, a good result for Burnley, not a very good result for Aston Villa. Uh, the next match, another one I'm going to kind of skirt over. Um, it seems like it was a relatively exciting match to, besides uh, finishing 0-0. Um, both sides had a lot of shots. It was relatively even on possession, but... Uh, Brighton nil, Fulham nil, not the most exciting of matches and uh, won't have done either side a, a hell of a lot of good really. Uh, yes, it's a point, but Fulham could really have done with the three points and Brighton could really have done with the three points to move them ahead of Newcastle. So just a, a boring deadlock that just doesn't help anyone. Um, now, I wish I could skirt over the next match, but unfortunately I cannot. Manchester United 1, Sheffield United 2. If there was ever an instance to say, to show you how much possession does not win matches, it's this one. Manchester United had 76% of possession to Sheffield United's 24. We had 16 shots to their 5, but only 4 of them were on target to their 3. And they scored 2 and we scored 1. Just a decidedly disappointing match. Um, fair play to Sheffield United, I, I can't say anything negative about them, they thoroughly deserved their second win of the competition. I think it was second win, was it? Yeah, second win of the competition. They thoroughly deserved it. Um, Manchester United weren't clinical enough, they weren't hungry enough, and I think they got complacent. We beat Liverpool, got a good result last week, drew with Liverpool, like, all right, we're Manchester United, we're back. And then all of a sudden, come crashing back down to earth. And big test on Saturday um, that I'll go over in my preview video tomorrow. But big test on Saturday against Arsenal. It's not an easy match to to play when you need a bounce back. So, um, so yeah, decidedly disappointing result for Manchester United there. Um, especially because of what it means at the top of the table. I mean... It means that Manchester City could potentially go four points clear if they win their match in hand. It means that Liverpool got closer, Leicester got closer. Just not a good a good result all around. It's, it was never going to be straightforward. We were going to win every match until the end of the season and, and rump the, the title. But um, the biggest thing that pisses me off is that now we've got to deal with all the negativity of like, I told you that Manchester United were faking. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. So, and that, that's from our own fans, let alone what other fans are saying. Uh, Everton won, Leicester City won. Um, seems like a, a relatively even match. Um, Leicester did have more possession, more shots and more shots on target. Um, Hamas Rodriguez bounces back and gets another goal. Um, this put Everton, this one point put Everton um, up to seventh. They do have two games in hand. And if they won both of those, they'd be level with Leicester in third. Um, Leicester would be ahead on goal difference, but still. Um, and yeah, Leicester are in third, one point behind Manchester United and two points behind Manchester City. So um, a, a fantastic performance from, from Leicester. Um, 
I think Leicester are that team that everyone remembers fondly because of their performance when they won the league. And so when you see them this high up the table, it's like, oh, come on, Leicester, you can do it, go on. So fair play to them. Um, Tottenham 1, Liverpool 3. Very disappointing from uh, Jose Mourinho's men and very disappointing for the rest of the league because uh, it gives Liverpool reason to be happy again. <laughs> um, so yeah, that kept Liverpool in fourth. It puts them three points behind Manchester United, four points behind City and two points behind Leicester. Um, it keeps Everton, uh, Tottenham in sixth uh, level with Everton. Um, so yeah, just not a good a good day for uh, for everyone else, really. Um, one thing I do want to say in favour of Tottenham is uh, Hoiberg, their midfielder that they signed from Southampton, is a bit of an inspired signing. I kind of made fun of it when it happened because I thought it was just, yeah, I mean, whatever, great, another bleh, midfielder going to one of the bigger teams, but proved me wrong without a shadow of a doubt. So, uh, so that'll do it for the review of this uh, of the midweek's matches. As I said, I will be back tomorrow with uh, a preview of the weekend's matches. Um, and until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all staying safe and keeping out of trouble. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And until next time, ta-ra for now.